everybody. Uh, Mike Lindsay here. Getting ready to talk about a uh, one of the last of a couple of updates on this railroad here. Uh, one of the reasons I haven't produced anything in a while is because I haven't really done much on this. At least not anything that's tremendously productive. So, um, the upshot of it is I've been spending a lot of time redesigning this railroad. I'm going to stick with the concept and the location but this particular railroad here uh, it's not really any one thing it's it's enough of a combination of things that it's just time for this to go and I've got a far superior design coming that I think will be much better operationally scenically um, electrically and I'll get a slightly longer mainline run there'll be it won't be quite such an open room you will you'll have more divided scenes and I'll actually be able to expand um, some of the modeled area enough to include a key scene that I wanted to include on this railroad and wasn't able to because of the way I built it so I'm gonna take a look around the railroad um, point out some of the issues I have or some of the areas I have issues with and then uh, uh, the next video will cover the new track plan, the new design, and how I'm going to be constructing some of that stuff. So, we'll uh, get on the other side of the camera here and have one last look at this here railroad. See you in a minute. So, I am uh, behind the camera now. Let's set this down and stabilize it so we're not uh, shaking ourselves to death here. So, what we got here is a uh, the final look at the layout and problems I've uh, encountered and why I decided to redesign it. And uh, one of the biggest reasons for doing the redesign was um, uh, was really, it kind of came down to the new track plan. Um, there are certain inaccuracies with this railroad that started to be a problem. Not the least of which is uh, the far end over here where trains are supposed to enter the railroad from underneath I-25 uh, I went back and looked at the prototype track plan for this area from back in the before time and uh, turns out that yard throat actually starts uh, on the other side of that wall so there's four feet I'm losing out of the other end and of course the distance between that spot and the Platte River over here is about a city block too long so where the river is is actually where Decatur Street should be and where say right here is where Zunai theoretically crosses um, Zunai should actually be um, over in this neighborhood a little more so um, and that should put the Platte River right about here so I'm actually longer than the prototype on this yard and I thought, well, that's very silly because now I have to stretch something out. And in so doing, I'm losing, I'm losing all kinds of uh, modelable space over here. And so by moving those elements down, I'm actually going to be able to move the scrapyard and everything further down into this neighborhood, turn the curve back towards the wall. And instead of having this big horseshoe right here, I can actually have it... Um, I can have a little bit of tangent in there, which I'm going to use to apply the West 12th Avenue street running scene. So it's one of the main reasons I wanted to build this railroad in the first place was to have street running. And I guess I got hasty with my uh, with my track planning and my des my desire to get started, and I didn't tweak the track plan enough, and ended up going with uh, this ridiculous turnback curve. And boy, it just um, it's created more problems than it's solved for sure so uh, the next element that's going to get dealt with is the switchback and the nature of things over here on the Lakewood side um, Sheridan Boulevard is still more or less going to be right about there where these two modules presently join up but um, I've changed the track arrangement somewhat so that um, I don't have to use a switchback to get to anything anymore. Uh, there will simply be um, another switch leading from the main line straight into the into the uh, West Metro Petro area, 
and the spur leading into Pioneer Sand and Gravel will simply uh, cross the tank car line on a diamond crossing. Uh, this will more or less be the same, although I'm going to add a, another switch and a second spur to this reload area here at Wiker Transfer. So, um, making it, instead of a lumber yard, it's going to be more of a general reload facility so I can increase the kinds of traffic I can run. You know, I don't necessarily have any cause to run corn syrup tank cars or steel coil cars or plastic pellet unloading or anything like that. And yet I have rolling stock for some of this stuff, and it'd be nice to use the reload facility as kind of an all-purpose team track where pretty much any kind of traffic can be spotted and unloaded there. So um, I'm also going to make some dimensional changes. The depth in the yard area here is three feet from the edge of the bench work to the backdrop there. Uh, that is no bueno especially considering that I don't really have much going on there. And uh, in reality, the power plant sits a little farther back. Uh, so because of some changes in the track plan, this whole area is going to go undergo a radical change, not the least of which is it's taken about six inches out of the uh, depth of it. So where the main line is headed west right there, we're actually going to, that's going to be the new benchwork edge. And then in addition to that, you know, we lose some on this end, we're going to gain some on this end because this is where it's going to kick out significantly farther. So if we're at, I think, 18 inches away from the wall right now, probably going to take that out to about 30 inches. So going to go at least another 12 inches out this way, which will give some more scenic depth for um, pioneer sand and gravel. Hopefully it'll add a little bit more to the Wiker area here. And we'll bring us a little farther back on this S turn so that I can uh, make the changes that I need to make there and uh, although this this S turn did come out pretty well um, cars don't um, the, the kind of the length of freight cars I run on this thing don't tend to uh, offset too much from each other on that it actually kind of flows really nicely the new one will flow even better okay the biggest change is going to be to the brewery um, nice though this is I have come up with a track plan that will make this a ton easier to operate and um, will give it more capacity in terms of the car loads coming in and out of it. So it's going to be a heck of a lot nicer and I'll have room to run. Um, I won't be restricted on the length of the locomotives I'm going to run. Um, and I'll actually be able to increase the length of trains coming and going from here. So even though it's a pretty small layout, um, I can still run some pretty big looking trains. So, and I've also done a lot more planning for uh, specific scenic details so that uh, I won't be improvising. That was the other reason I decided to rebuild this. Um, I kind of improvised as I went along and got impatient with it. And now I'm, on this railroad, I'm kind of stuck with some things I don't want. And uh, there's also electrical issues because I used foam. Um, I didn't check everything 100%. And so I've got, you know, locomotives stalling in spots where locomotives have no business stalling. Um, starting to have derailment issues because of uh, trying to align the foam and how the track reacted when it was being ballasted and, and one misery after another. So uh, basically... The, uh, the end result of all of this work is I'm going to keep some things. I'm going to keep this module as is, finish up the scenery and, and do some other stuff with it and use it for photography. Um, same thing with this scene here. Uh, maybe this one. And I'm going to take a chunk out of uh, this end of the yard. So pretty much from that a joint there to the other joint across the Platte River. And I'm going to take about 12 inches off the back end. So I'll have a 2 by 8 foot yard module um, for photography because this area is going to, this particular area is going to undergo radical changes. Um, There's another big design change is that um, this is no longer going to be the classification yard um, for the railroad. The trains are going to be made up somewhere else and I'm pretty excited about what that somewhere else is going to be. And uh, it's going to take some real trickery to make it work but I think I think it'll be much better than I expected. 
Another thing you might notice is the Chinese red stuff is back out on the layout. And uh, I think I'm going to allow for the possibility that this railroad can be backdated as far back to the uh, late 60s. Kind of uh, when the SD40s, basically when Colorado and Southern got on board the second generation diesel train and just before the BN merger. And I might even let the era slide into the you know, post-BN merger so I can justify um, the occasional splash of Cascade Green floating around in this yard because I do have a small number of Burlington Northern pieces still. So, um, And, of course, the Rock and the Chessie there, that's definitely after the BN merger. So kind of requires some some care. I don't, I don't know. I'm j I want to kind of be able to be flexible with it. So anyway, we'll see how that all shakes out. And... Uh, on the next video, we'll talk about the track plan and uh, get a better look at that and uh, talk about why I'm so excited about tearing this down and starting all over again. So thanks for watching. Uh, like and subscribe. I'm Mike Lindsay. Thanks for coming out.